Hi everyone, it's Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield here from Transport Evolved. And I'm here today to talk to you about an app that could make your Nissan Leaf driving experience just so much better. And the best thing of all is it's free, or at least the basic version is. I give you the Nissan Leaf Spy app. And here's why you need it if you have a Nissan Leaf. So what's Leaf Spy, I hear you ask? Well, it's an app that can run on your Android phone or your iPhone that allows you to connect your smartphone to your Nissan Leaf using one of these, an ODB2 to Bluetooth dongle. Now, OBD2 to Bluetooth dongles are pretty cheap. This is an Elm one, and there are a list of adapters that work with this app and a, and a list of adapters that don't. Uh, you can also use an ODB2 to Wi-Fi adapter that connects a, a little Wi-Fi network to your car and then your phone connects to that but it's pretty cheap. I got this, I think, for under $10, and it plugs into the diagnostic port underneath your Nissan Leafs dash. And then when you turn on your car and you connect your ODB2 adapter to your car, you can suddenly see a whole load of extra information about the car's state of charge, battery health, and a whole host of other features. Once you've bought the version of the app that you want to use, you just connect the dongle to the Leaf Spy app. You only have to pair it once. And it's done really easily through this uh, screen on the app. So you go up to the top right hand corner here, you select the ODB2 connection. It gives you a choice from Bluetooth LE, Bluetooth paired devices, Wi Fi devices, or work offline. I'm using the ODB2 port, which you can see here. It's already connected to my car, so I don't need to worry about that. It asks me for the pairing code and off it goes to connect to the car's system. Now, once Leaf Spy has connected to your car, you have a choice of different options. It can tell you how full the battery is and it gives you two tenths of a percent, which the car's onboard display, even in the more recent Nissan Leafs, doesn't do. It also tells you the average temperature of the batteries and even gives you a list of the various cell voltages throughout the car, which enables you to see which cells are more charged than others, how much difference there is between the, the weakest and the strongest cell. My car right now, there's a 9 millivolt difference between the weakest cell and the strongest cell, meaning my pack is pretty well balanced. It also gives me information about the car. It gives you my serial number, which is at the top here, um, how many amp hours capacity my car's battery has left, its state of health, i.e. how well the battery is compared to when it went left the factory, and also uh, a few other important pieces of information, like this car, for example, has got 55,073 miles on the clock. It's had 81 quick charges and 2,819 level one or level two chargers. So there's a ticker inside the car that keeps count of how many times you plug in. This information is available through the app. But where it gets the most useful perhaps is this screen here, which tells you how much battery you've got left in kilowatt hours, how much charge you've got in your battery pack, and also how much energy is being drawn at any one point in time. And this means that you can drive longer distance trips and actually meter out your energy consumption pretty well. If you've got this in a suitable dock on your dashboard, you can even use it to ensure that you don't run out of charge. Because one of these screens here, if I just find it, oops, one of these screens here allows you to um, decide how many miles you've got until your low battery warning, your very low battery warning, or a reserve of your choosing. You can say, I want to be able to drive this car until it's got two kilowatt hours left or one kilowatt hour left. And it will calculate how many miles it thinks you'll be able to drive based on the efficiency that you're getting. Now, how do you figure out that efficiency? Well, when you start your trip, you can reset the car's indicated fuel efficiency on the dash. The car tells you in terms of miles per kilowatt hour what your efficiency is. So recently I was doing a trip and I was getting five miles per kilowatt hour. So tapped into that for a, any given state of charge, it was able to tell me how many miles I would be able to drive, assuming I could keep that efficiency up. And on that day, when I was driving in that super efficient manner, I was able to do 65 miles on a charge and got home with still an indicated 25 miles remaining, which means I was extremely efficient that day. And it was thanks to this app.
Now there are some other useful features that you should probably know about, such as this one, which tells me what the tire pressure is on my car. And I can even use this app to re-register my tire sensors, which is particularly useful if you live in a place where you have a set of winter tires and a set of summer tires, because as you probably know, tire shops charge you a lot of money to re-register your car's tire sensors when the summer comes around or when the winter comes around. This app can do it for you. But the other really useful thing about this app is that it has a service mode. You access that by pressing the top right hand button here and then selecting settings. And then in your settings screen, which you can see here, you enter in uh, enable for service screen. Now, before I get to that, I should also point out here that this settings page allows you to set your model year, the capacity of your battery in your car, and a few other important things, such as the units you'd prefer to use, and also enables you to do trip logging. So it uses your phone's GPS connection to log your car's fuel efficiency in a log file, which you can then upload to the internet for your own use. This can either be to help you plan future trips or to help yourself become more fuel efficient as your ownership goes on. But right now we're going to use the service screen. So we're going to tick the enable button on the service screen. And then when we go back, we'll be able to use this screen. Now, it has things like door, lock, unlock settings, headlight settings, interior light settings, register tire positions, which is something I already talked about, and read clear DTCs. Now, DTCs, for those who don't know, are things called diagnostic troubleshooting codes. Every modern car has them, and it enables you to check to see if your car is healthy or not. It will tell me if there's any issues with any of the systems in my car. And right now, it appears that my car is pretty good. The other thing you can change with this is when your doors lock. Now, because I've got a family, I've programmed my car so that when I move out of park, the doors automatically lock. That click was my doors locking alongside the parking crawl disengaging to put the car in drive. As soon as I put the car back in park, you hear the doors unlock. That's very useful. The other thing that's useful for me is the ability to change how the headlights behave. Now, if you've got a Nissan Leaf with automatic headlights, and depending on which market you're in and the model you have, you may or may not have automatic headlights, you can change how those automatic headlights operate. You can change the settings so that the auto on sensitivity is really, really early and really sensitive or less sensitive set it to normal if you want. But you can also tell it to automatically turn on the lights at twilight or if the wiper is on. This is very useful if you happen to live in a state where it's mandatory that if you have the windshield wipers on, you have to have your lights on as well. So I've recently tweaked that. So if I leave the windshield wipers on for more than about a second, the lights automatically come on. I don't have to touch the lights. It's all very clever. And you can do that from within this app. That's all I really have to say about the Leaf Spy app. Disclaimer, I've been using this app now probably for about three years and I'm actually on the beta test team. So I get to try out new versions of the app before they go to the app store. It's been a very reliable app over the years. In fact, its reliability has only got better of late. I'm using it with a OnePlus 3 phone and I've had no trouble with the app whatsoever. I used to use it with a rooted Android Kindle as well. It's a very useful app, and while not every Leaf owner will use it, it's certainly worthwhile if you're a bit geeky and nerdy, or you just want to find more information about your car that's not available on the standard display. So why don't you go and download it today? Prices are free for the basic version, ranging to $14.99 for the fully fledged Bells and Whistles Leaf Spy Pro. And if you want to have a look and you happen to be in the Portland area, hit me up. I'm more than happy to show you my version before you buy. I'll be back later on in the week with the Transport Evolved News Roundup. So until then, my name's Licky Gordon-Bloomfield. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to support us on Patreon. Like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, keep evolving. Keep evolving.